All right, hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some basics on perspective drawing. So let's get going. All right, so for this activity of learning how to do perspective drawing, you're gonna need a piece of paper, a pencil preferably, and a ruler. The ruler is very important because it'll let you guys know where everything goes. So what I did on my piece of paper, I did a nice clean border. Um, so here's a, here it is again. Um, I did a nice clean border just so I don't get over to the outside too much. Uh, and then that way my outside's like nice and clean. Uh, and then I drew a nice horizontal line right across the middle. And then I did a dot, as you guys can see right here. Now, uh, I did do two like you just saw. Uh, so one's going to be a demonstration for demonstration purposes. And then another one will be the final image of what I'm going to be doing and what I want you guys to do at home. So perspective, there's a couple things you need to know. This will be considered the horizon line. The horizon line is where the land meets the sky in a photo. So I'll give you guys a couple examples uh, right now up on your screen, I guess. Uh, so the horizon line is very important. It can be high, low, uh, in the middle. So for this demonstration purposes, we'll put the horizon line in the middle. And the dot in the middle, that's called the vanishing point. That's where uh, the lines convey to uh, a point on the picture. And um, that's mainly used when you're doing buildings and other things that require a straight line. And uh, I'll explain what the vanishing point is as well. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to do is create the road. So the reason why I'm creating a road here is so it'll symbolize uh, where it's coming from. So if I draw a road like this, if I go like this, line from here to there, it's showing that it's coming towards us, right? So if I were to draw a line like this, it's possible, or I can draw a line like this going really wide and go over here, and it's like really coming straight at us. So what I'm going to do, for my sake, I'm going to kind of make the road like this. It's all originating from that vanishing point, just like so. And it kind of looks like a triangle right now, it looks kind of weird, but if I just add the required things to make it look like a road, it'll look more like a road. So watch what I do. If, uh, if it's a road, some times they have the dash in the middle to divide the road in half. If you separate those dashes in a certain way, it'll look more realistic. So if I start really small and tiny, it'll look real. And then as I go further, sorry, closer and closer to me, the line gets longer and wider. It'll start to look more realistic. Now, obviously, it'll look more realistic if it was yellow. But for this demonstration purposes, I'm just making it with Sharpie. There we go. Now, obviously, I probably spaced them out more. I forgot to do that over here. But as you can see, it's looking more like a road, right? Now, another thing you can do uh, when it comes to perspective, uh, you can make the sidewalks as well, originating from the same point. So if it's like increase my lines, but using that same point over there, but increasing this point right here, outwards more. You can kind of create a sidewalk like that. Oh, that's a bad sidewalk. <laughs> Let's make that the lip of the sidewalk. When I go a little bit further out, I'm going to go for right there. So sometimes you're going to have to mark spots that way you can see it better. Since like some of us don't have three dimensional rulers. All right, there we go. It actually kind of worked out better. So now it looks like it has like a lifted edge from the sidewalk. So now what we could do is go horizontally completely. So I can take my ruler, go horizontal. And as I get closer to that vanishing point, I can make my lines get closer and closer together. So right now they're kind of spaced out pretty evenly. But as I get closer to that center point, the lines will get closer and closer and closer together. So I'm just kind of like eyeballing it and guessing. So it might not be perfect. There we are. So notice how the sidewalk's disappearing towards the end. And I won't do the other side because I'll save the other side for something else. Um, we learned about this in the workbook. As you guys know, when it comes to per comes to perspective, um, when things are closer to you, uh, it's normally towards the bottom of the page or bottom of the picture, and they're a lot larger. And when something's further away, it's normally towards the top of the page and smaller. But since um, you can't really go above the horizon line too much or else it looks like it's floating, uh, the closest or how far you can go up is basically where the horizon line is. So let me demonstrate using trees. So if I had a tree right here, tree is going to be super small, right? You could tell that tree is really far away. Now, if the tree is over here, nice and big, as a matter of fact, it's going off the page a little bit. Now, just by putting these trees super close 
together in the photo, but one's bigger than the other and one's higher up, it's easy to tell that one is further in the distance. So I can keep going if I want and I can make a medium tree, just like so. And there we are. So the reason why I didn't do um, the horizontal line in Sharpie is to prove that sometimes you might have to erase later. So now I don't have any other plans on making anything else. Uh, if I wanted to add more trees, maybe I'll do this later, but I don't have any more plans to make any more trees on this one. So I would complete my line over here. There. All right, so that's half of the picture and I can add more stuff later on. Now this half, the reason why I didn't draw this line right here is because I'm going to show you guys how to draw buildings in particular. Now buildings are a really interesting shape that you could do. Now when you're doing buildings, uh, you want to make sure you place uh, the lines using the vanishing point first. So what I'm going to do, say for instance I want a building, um, I'll do three. Um, I want to place them all along the side of this road. So I'm going to go from this vanishing point, I'm going to use maybe a little bit away from the sidewalk. So I want to make sure I go away from the sidewalk about this much and I'll match it with a vanishing point. And now what I'm going to do is make three dash lines. So one, two, and three. Maybe I'll make this one a little bit shorter. There we go. Now that I have my dashed lines, you can see where the fronts of the buildings are. And now all I gotta do is go up. Now this is where it comes in handy to have a pencil. So unfortunately I will go pencil because I, I will mess up. So I'm gonna move on to pencil here. Now what I'm gonna do with these dashed lines that I did diagonally using this vanishing point, I'm just gonna create uh, vertical lines uh, on each side of those diagonals. So I'm gonna go straight up. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. And since this one doesn't have a spot where I can see, it'll just stay the way it is. Now, here is the thing. Now we have lines going up. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on your camera or on your view. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is that we need to close off the tops so it doesn't look so plain. So you want to judge how high you want the building to be. Uh, so if you want the back one to be the tallest one, obviously the line's got to be taller or vice versa. If you want the building in the front to be taller, then you want those lines to be taller than those lines over there. So um, that's that. So in order to close them, you got to do this. So what you're going to do is you're going to go from the vanishing point again, and then you're going to match the top of those lines together. And you want to make sure that they match together. So this one's super close to the vanishing point, so it's going to look like that. All right, so I'm going to connect these two lines together. Boom, now they're connected. I'm going to connect them right here so you guys can see what just happened. All right, it looks weird, right? I have to do it for the other buildings now. So again, match it with the vanishing point, that middle line right there, or that middle point right there. And then I'm going to match with these two lines right here. One right there and one right here. Put them together. Boom. Now I can complete my line. Ta-da, like that. And last but not least, this one right here, but since I didn't have an ending where I didn't draw another line to go with it, um, all I gotta do is match my vanishing point line or uh, my vanishing point to the line I just did over there and go straight off the page, just like that. All right, so now what I can do is I can erase using an eraser. I'm gonna use a need eraser. I can erase parts of the horizon line I don't need but in my case, it looks like I don't need a lot of it. So I'm glad I didn't do Sharpie on that. But it looks like I do need a little bit at the end. So I'll be needing this part of my horizon line. There. Now, the reason why we didn't use any of the other parts of the horizon line is because it's covered with buildings. And you must be wondering, how do we complete the buildings now? Using these points, uh, starting with the most forward one first, you want to draw them horizontally and away from the center of the page. So this one, I can't do anything with. I can just add more details to the building. Um, but for the other ones, I can. So for this one right here, this middle building, I'll take this point right here and draw a horizontal line going to the right. There. So now there's like a little alleyway. I'm not sure you guys can see that. Let's do the top now. This one has a further trajectory. So I'm gonna use a ruler so I don't mess up. Go from there and go all the way to the right. There. So now that building's complete as well. Let's do the last building. I'll use a ruler for this one and another one on top. And there we go. So now we have three buildings next to each other in a perspective manner. And if I want, I can take my eraser and erase 
parts of the top I don't need as well. So again, like I said, I'm glad I did this in pencil because I knew that that would happen. So same go rules go for like windows and doors if you want to be more precise. If you want to go like this, like uh, just do it freehand like me, uh, you can kind of just freehand the doors and try to guess where the doors will be, like that. So maybe I'll make this one a double door. And if you want to guess where the windows are or the awnings are, you can. So here's my awning. There we go. And then I'll put the store name right here, I guess. I don't know. And then just random windows here and there. You can kind of go like that if you'd like. Uh, but if you want to be more precise with your perspective drawing, um, again, just use your ruler. Um, so if I want to do the top of a door, you would um, kind of like judge where the building is. Use the vanishing point. So adjust your top of the door where you want it. So maybe right there. And then I'll do a line from my vanishing point from here to there. And then I would just go straight down, straight vertical down. See? And then I'll do the same thing for windows and stuff. So for windows, maybe I'll just go two lines. So two dashes, one, two. And then you'd use your pencil again because you don't know where they end off. So here's my vertical line, here's my vertical line, vertical, vertical. And then I'll use the vanishing point once again try to figure out where those tops of those windows are there we are so now it's more perfect so say for instance if there was windows above that horizon line so if I windows over here same thing would happen just like that and then I'd use my pencil oh thing mixed up here use my pencil to make the vertical lines I'd be really, I should be really using a ruler, but it's okay. All right. But I would use the ruler for the tops of them, just like so. So here is this one, and here's that one right there. And you can see that it has a different angle than the lower windows. Okay? So everything's originating from that vanishing point. So that vanishing point is a lot more important than you would imagine, because whenever there's a straight line in a picture like this, um, it's highly needed when doing anything else. Let me just erase this line and this trade's bothering me. All right, so that's the basics of um, perspective drawing. So I'm gonna do a quick one on the other page and then you guys need to follow on or you can guys do your own. So I'm gonna throw up a couple examples right here. If you guys wanna look at those, you can. I'm gonna do my own right here and I'm gonna fast forward the video so you guys can see. So here I go.
Okay. Um, okay, um, I'm not quite done yet. However, I think you guys can get a gist of what's happening right here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I still got to do um, to complete my picture. But uh, this is just an example of how to do perspective. And I did it a little bit different. But I did it with a bridge and kind of like a lake or a river down the middle. So again, this is a, a version with this kind of style. And then here's one like with a road dead in the middle. Uh, but you can do anything you want. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood how perspective worked with a horizon line and a vanishing point. So those are two very important things when it comes to perspective drawing. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did. Uh, I'm going to keep working on this and we'll see if I make it as a thumbnail or something. But anyways, I don't want to make this video too long. So that's it for me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.